Hi, AP scholars. We are looking at concept 1.6. It's the final concept of unit one. That's right. We made it already, and it is only our second video. Efficiency. Uh, so in this concept, it's our first new concept in microeconomics, and you start to see how micro is a little different than macro. There's a very specific set of procedures that if you follow, you will get the right answer every single time. So it's a little bit more about precision than kind of this line of thinking. So the first concept we apply this new way of thinking to is marginal analysis and consumer choice. Let's dig in. So the first half of this is trying to maximize utility. Remember, this is the central incentive for every individual. Every choice that we make is designed to maximize our utility or our satisfaction as an individual, right? So the question is, how much is enough? When will you stop? So to answer this question, you're often given something like this. You'll be given a chart with a quantity and a total utility. And you'll be asked, hey, how much uh, pizza should you buy if the price per slice is $2? We're just assuming that's the only cost associated with this, okay? So if that's true, how many should I buy? Well, we know that you'll continue to consume until marginal benefits equals marginal costs. You saw that in concept 1.5 at the equilibrium there. But that is true, I have to calculate marginal benefit or marginal utility. This is the part that confuses people, right? They see this chart here and they forget to calculate marginal utility based on this chart because they're not given these blanks and instead they answer the question incorrectly. So how do you calculate marginal from this? You simply take the change in total. So to consume my first slice of pizza, I got went from zero to eight. So I have eight additional utils or additional units of benefit from consuming my first piece of pizza. Delicious. My second piece of pizza, I went from eight to 14, a little less awesome, but still delicious. I got six additional units of benefit, 14 and 19. You'll see this number steadily decline as we're calculating these changes as the law of diminishing returns kicks in as I'm consuming each additional slice. So when will you stop? Well, if you're me, you won't stop. Actually, if you're anybody, you won't stop until the cost of eating an additional slice is let or equal to or greater than the benefit of eating an additional slice. So if we do this, we will see our new additional costs. If every slice of pizza costs $2 and it's our only cost, then to buy my first slice of pizza costs me $2. And my second slice of pizza is going to cost me two more dollars. My third is going to cost me two more dollars. So my marginal cost is actually constant at two dollars. How many will you consume? The answer is five. You will continue to consume as long as your marginal benefit is greater than your marginal cost. Like at four slices of pizza, my marginal benefit is four. My marginal cost is two. As long as that's true, I will continue to consume more. As soon as your costs get greater than your benefits, like at slice number six, where my benefit is one and my cost is two, I should consume less. You're looking for the perfect equilibrium where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost because there's no incentive to eat more to get more benefit or eat less to get less benefit. I don't even know what eating less would be like. Um, yeah, let's not think too deeply into that. <laughs> so that's how you calculate or identify the quantity or how much an individual should consume. You'll continue to consume until marginal benefit equals marginal cost. A lot like equilibrium in any other graph that we've been talking about. Okay, so that's the first half of it. Second half gets a little trickier, but follow the procedure and we'll do some practice with this. It's consumer choice, with, where we take marginal utility, we divide it by price, and we start to see how much additional utils you get per dollar spent. And that gives us kind of a ratio that helps us understand what combination we should buy when we're given a certain budget. So let's take a look here. Um, let's say you have two destination choices, right? You can go to Tahiti or Chicago. So just looking at the front of this Tahiti, I'm going to get 3,000 additional utils by going to Tahiti. It's going to be awesome, right? It's like tropical. There's oceans. I assume there's fish there people might be nice. You could have a pineapple with one of those little straws, right? Just like perfection. The other option is to go to Chicago. And you like Chicago, fine. You get a thousand additional utils, the shorter trip, so that's nice. It's the big city. You get to see a lot of things, but not quite as exotic and amazing as Tahiti. Which one are you going to choose? 
Well, in the face of this, I'm going to choose Tahiti all day long, but I'm only looking at one half of the equation. The question that you should probably ask, because most consumers would ask this, is how much does it cost? But if I add the cost there, like this, I see that the price of Tahiti is $3,000, but the price of going to Chicago is only $500. And so if we, can, we take our utility and we divide it by the dollars that we have to pay, then we, we will get our marginal utility per dollar. In other words, for every dollar that I spend, this is how much additional benefit I get. It's kind of that idea of like the most bang for your buck sort of scenario. And this actually more closely connects to the way that people make choices and make decisions, right? So if my 3,000 utils, I divide it by the $3,000 it costs, each dollar I spent only gives me one additional util, where my money would be spent much more efficiently in Chicago. Because in Chicago, I get 1,000 utils for the price of $500. So I take 1,000 divided by my price or marginal utility over price, or we call it the utes for your loot, get it? Utility for your loot, your dollars, use for your loots, is two utils, two utils per dollar. For every dollar spent, I get two additional units of benefit. So as a result, I'm actually going to choose Chicago, not Tahiti, right? So that's how we do it. Now, how what does this look like on the actual exam? What kind of questions will they ask? Well, we use marginal utility per dollar to choose combinations. How much of two items will I choose? when I'm choosing more than one, because most of the time you're not just making one choice, you're making a choice between several options, right? And so we design a little matrix here. Notice in this matrix, we have two options. We have going to the movies, which is $10, nice and cheap, and taking around around the go-karts, which is $5, right? So those are our two options. You walk into this amazing, I can only imagine, it's one of the most magical places in the world if it has both of these things, and you got $40 burning a hole in your pocket. What combination of movies and go-karts will actually satisfy your utility? Well, we know from Tahiti and Chicago that just looking at my marginal utility isn't enough. I have to take into account my price. So my movies are $10 a piece. I want to calculate my utes for my loots because it tells me for each dollar I spend how much additional benefit I get. And that more closely represents the kind of decision-making metric that people use when making choices. So I take my 30 and I divide it by 10. So my marginal utility per dollar for my first time going to the movies is three units per dollar spent. So every dollar gives me three additional utils. It's pretty good, right? That's pretty high. I look at my second one, notice my marginal utility goes down. I'm watching my second movie. It's not nearly as exciting. So I take that 20 divided by 10. Let me get my equation up here. 20, I divide it by my price, which is up here, marginal utility divided by price. That gives me two. And then 10 divided by 10, that gives me one. And then five divided by 10, that gives me 0.5. Okay, it's that simple. Calculate your utes for your loots, your marginal utility per dollar. I jump over here. My marginal utility for go-karts is 10, five, two, and one. So clearly, objectively, I like movies more than go-karts. But go-karts are less expensive. So for my first time going around the go-karts, I get 10 utils. My first time going, 10 utils. So I'm going to take that 10, divide it by my price of 5. My use for my loot is going to be 2. 5 divided by 5 is going to be 1. 2 divided by 5 is going to be 2 fifths. And then 1 divided by 5 is going to be 1 fifth. Okay. So the question is, what will I choose? And the answer is, I will choose whatever option is available to me that gives me the most bang for my buck, and I'll just go down the line that way until I'm out of money, right? Assuming all other things constant. So let's get this here. There we go. Got all of our items in there. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to choose is what? What's the first choice that will give me most bang for my buck? Well, first, I'm going to go to the movies. At the movies, I get three utils per dollar. No other choice here, no go-karting, no movies, will give me more utility than my first time going to the movies. So I'm absolutely doing that. How much money did I just spend? Well, I keep track of that over here. I just spent $10, right? Each time going to the movie cost me $10. So now I don't have $40. I have $30 left. Okay, 
So I've got 30 more dollars. I'm going to keep going. What am I going to choose next? Well, for the next one, I actually have two that are the same. I will either go to the movies or go to the go-karts because both of them give me two utils per dollar. The question is, do I have enough money for both? So for the second time going to the movies, it's going to cost me an additional $10. Sorry, let me get my ah, pen here. Cost me additional ten dollars. So now I'm not at thirty; I'm at twenty. And then for my first time going to the go karts here, that's going to cost me five dollars. And so I'm not at twenty; I'm at fifteen dollars. Can I afford it? Absolutely. So I'm going to do both. It doesn't really matter what order I do them in. I'm going to go go karting, and I'm going to go watch another movie. So far, so good. I've got two movies that I've watched, and I've gone go karting once. What am I going to do next? Well, again, whatever the most bang for your buck is. Notice again, we have a match, a matchy matchy. For our third time going to the movies, it's one. And for my second time going go-karting, it's one. So the question is, can I do both? Can I afford it? So I jump in here with my pen. How much does it cost me to go to the movies for the third time? Well, it's 10 additional dollars. So now I'm not at $15 left. I only have $5 left. Can I go go-karting for $5? Of course I can. That is the cost of go-karting right here. And so that takes me down to $0. So am I going to go go-karting again and watch a third movie? The answer is, of course you are. I'm going to do one more movie, and I'm going to go go-karting one more time. And I'm out of money, so I'm done. So what combination of movies and go-karts is going to maximize my utility? The combination, combination that's going to maximize my utility is going to be three movies and two go-karts. How do we know this is actually maximizing my utility? Well, calculate it. What is my total utility for going to the movies three times? Well, that's 30 plus 20 plus 10, so that's 60. And then 10 plus 5, that's 15. That's 75 units, 75 right there. What about, you know, going to two movies and four go-karts? What would that be? Well, if I do two movies and four go-karts, then it'd be 30 plus 20, 10 plus, which is 50, 10 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1. That's what, 15, 18, 18, 68. Sorry, that's my alarm. 68 utils. So notice this combination that we chose in this margin utility per dollar or use for your loots is actually the amount that gives us the most total utility. So you could go through and do all the combinations and add them up, but this is a much easier way to do it. So steps, find your use for your loots, your marginal utility per dollar, and then go through what's your budget, can you afford it, and go from your highest use for your loot, or your most bang for your buck, to the lowest until you're out of money. Okay, now, to make it even a little bit easier for you, there's a rule that you can apply here that makes answering these questions a whole lot easier. It's a margin utility maximizing rule. The idea is this. The consumer will continue to spend their money until the margin utility per dollar of each of the goods is equal to one another. In other words, the margin utility per dollar of X, or go-karting, will be equal to the margin utility per dollar of Y, or going to the movies, right? In other words, you will find where it's matchy-matchy, where your use for your loots are equal before the two, the two choices that you have. In other words, once you calculate your use for your loots, just find the matches and then ask yourself if you can afford it. So let's take a look at that same, or a, a new chart here. Sorry, I almost said same chart. A new chart here and try to apply that concept and you'll see how much quicker it goes. The price of product X is doo -doo -doo -doo, four. All right, so the price of product X is four dollars. I'm just going to pop that up here. The price of product Y is two dollars. The question is, or and the income that the consumer has is twenty dollars. The question is, what combination of X and Y will this individual choose based on these metrics? Well, I know I have to find my use for my loots. So I have to take my margin utility divided by my price. So 32 divided by 4 is 8. 28 divided by 4 is 12. Yeah. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 20 divided by 4 is 5. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. Cool. I jump over to the other one. My margin utilities are right here. 
my price for each of those is two. Move my face a little bit. And so 24 divided by two is 12. 20 divided by two is 10. 16 divided by two is eight. 12 divided by two is six. <laughs> and eight divided by two is four. That is not 12, that is seven. My apologies, that's why I paused there. You guys didn't correct me? How did I get 12 from there? <laughs> seven times four is 28. Ah, math. Anyways, so now what do I do? Well, now I could go through and say, okay, so my highest is 12, so the first thing I'm gonna do is product Y, and that cost me $2, and I go from $20 to $18. What am I gonna choose next? But that will take forever to go down through all these things. So instead, I just found my matchy matchy and I asked the question, can I afford it? So I normally go somewhere in the middle because that's normally where it lines up. So I know I got a matchy matchy here with six, six and six. Can I afford this? Can I afford three of product X and four of product Y? Well, three of product X is three times four. So that's going to be twelve dollars. And three of pro or four of product Y is going to be two times four. So that's eight dollars. All of that together is 12 plus 8 is $20. Can I afford that? Well, I got $20. And in fact, I'm out of money at that point. So that is my ideal combination. I'm going to consume three units of product X and four units of product Y. So what are the steps? Calculate marginal utility per dollar. First step. Second, find the match. Just choose a match. If it doesn't work out, if you don't have enough money for it, or you have leftover money, find a different match, right? Move up in the matches or move down in the matches. So matchy-matchy. And then after you find the matchy-matchy, can you afford it? If you have $0 left, that's the combination that you're actually going to consume. In other words, find your utes for your loots and find matchy-matchy, and you will get this right every single time. Okay. So using that same idea here, right? We our matchy match was one and one, and that was the combination we wanted to consume with our our given budget, right? So find the match. Can you afford it? If you can, and you have zero dollars left over, you found the correct combination that will maximize your utility. Friends, that's it for unit one. We'll do some practice of that concept. That's the most challenging concept on this unit. Outside of that, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Peace.